Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, we all want to understand how our mind works, right? And sometimes you need to go a little deeper than just mindset. You got to understand how the brain functions. And so, this week on Take a Pause, I'm talking to Siddharth Warrior. He is a neurologist but also a content creator. One would unpack in this part 1 of my chat with him. So, we'll talk about the science of motivation and a bunch of other stuff. So, Before we head to my chat with him, I want you to smash that bell icon and hit subscribe. I want to kick off this episode of Take a Pause with me, Varun Dugirala, right now. Hey, Sid. Uh, welcome to Take a Pause. Uh, this is a chat I've been looking forward to, considering the entire internet speaks about neuroscience these days. I think anywhere you go, there is conversations about neuroscience. I'm like, let's actually talk to someone who's who knows more about it than what they've read on Twitter or watched on a YouTube video. So, firstly, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Aaron. Excited to be here. Yeah, I want to start off by first asking you: uh, Was neuroscience what you were interested in? early on when when you kind of started off um, your journey to being a doctor was there always something that interested you uh, to be honest medical students aren't really told about the word neuroscience uh, we are always taught about neat mm. which is entrance exams that's all that entrance <laughs> uh, that's all that medical students are talked about um, we we only think in terms of uh, ranks and seats and uh, which college what is the cut off so while you are a medical student you don't really think about life passions mm. i uh, had an idea that i liked to study human behavior that was the only that was my north star that was the only idea that i had um and then initially i thought i could do psychology and mm. then i realized that i wanted to and un- understand about the whole body which drew mm. me towards general medicine and from there it went down to neurology and mm. after i started reading about neurology uh, there were a few lines in my textbooks that got me very interested mm. uh, like for example in the in the textbook that talked about sexual disorders mm. there was a line that talked of orgasm okay. and said that orgasm is a non pathological autonomic dysreflexia i mean trick to know what that means already <laughs> <laughs> so lines like that uh, really get me going because i think neuroscience gives you such an interesting way of looking at everyday occurrences you mm. know just your everyday human experiences through a different lens so that uh, stuff like that really got me intrigued i have to ask you what that term meant um, you have you have intrigued me <laughs> as as much as you got intrigued when you heard that so what does that exactly mean yeah so autonomics the autonomic system is what keeps you in balance uh, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system is what mm. keeps your heartbeat your breathing your uh, digestion and your sexual activity in balance so for all these functions to occur normally your autonomic system has to be in balance uh, what happens in orgasm is that your autonomic system goes completely chaotic there is a complete shift from balance to chaos and in any other life situation mm. that would be considered as a critical emergency we will have to admit that person <laughs> but in an orgasm that is completely acceptable <laughs> you hold different perspective to how you look at a human orgasm in terms of actually sheer chaos is actually a good way to put it uh, because i feel that anybody uh, who has been through it will will realize what that means yeah. exactly yeah think about this like if you if you're breathing that fast and your heart beat heartbeat is uh, racing that fast and uh, uh, you know all those things if it were to happen in any other life situation it would be a panic attack yeah but in the context of an orgasm it's acceptable you know what that also makes me think about is you know the most thing the most interesting thing about the human mind is that how it reacts while you know like you said like the same exact set of things kind of happening in another scenario would be a panic attack versus here it's not um how do we is, is there a way for us to almost like at a base level understand because it's more day to day occurrences for us for us to understand okay this is how our the basics of how our mind works which we should all know which 
like you said like most of us don't necessarily learn about it in the same way how we learn about so many different parts of our body we've never really taught about our brain never really taught about how it functions uh when we're in school or even like early college uh, but this part for me is intriguing because it, if if you understand how that works you might actually be able to understand yourself better absolutely i think the reason we are not taught this is because the knowledge itself is uh evolving so rapidly and a lot of our understanding has come in the last 20 30 years we kind of knew the different parts of the brain but mm. tr- the true understanding of how all these parts work together to translate into what we experience as life mm. that understanding has come very recently since the advent of functional mris and uh, you know pet scans uh, before that we weren't really aware mm. whereas the other organs we knew the heart beating would pump blood and we knew how it worked but the brain is uh, it's it's the last bastion i think the brain and the immune system are the two systems in the body that uh, have been understood mu- at a much bigger depth very recently and, and i've honestly uh, i know a, the curiosity of seeing so much of this content online and i'd love to also know from you why that suddenly blown up as one of the key things everybody discusses on the internet now is is neuroscience um but on the other hand what i'm also intrigued to see is anything you kind of study uh when when you kind of understand motiv- human motivation um you're trying to understand um human emotion you you trying to kind of dig into the fact that even why do we react to certain sit- like situations in certain ways like i was talking to um uh, my my coach the other day and, and she was telling me that laziness is our is our mind innately telling us that we need to conserve energy for some foreseeable danger coming up ahead and i had never thought of it that way it just blew my mind when she said that so i I'd, i'd want to dig into each of these aspects i mean i think we're good to tap into motivation habits um you know getting to laziness i actually want to start with laziness it's it's actually i think the best topic to start with so um mm. why does our mind make us lazy yeah i think your coach had a fairly good point um we are living in a constructed world our reality is a construct and so uh, somewhere in the story that we have created uh, whatever it is that we are trying to spend energy on is clearly not that important so it's the same thing for procrastination uh, we say that this is important but somehow at the basal levels of the brain where the true decision making actually happens yeah the priority list is different <laughs> uh, and so for for that part of the brain uh you are actually wasting energy when you could have been doing something much more important for your survival like watching netflix <laughs> netflix has done a great <laughs> job in convincing our brain that it is good for survival <laughs> you know that brings me to a very important point how does the brain even decide what's important and what's not because like you said <laughs> it might just tell you that netflix is far more important to do um than for you to actually finish yeah. filing your taxes um i seem to always choose instagram scrolling over filing taxes um I, I, it, it is literally what i've gone through today on on something else and i was like why does our mind do that i mean how does it make us prioritize maybe the easier thing over the thing you actually have to do there are certain things that our brain is wired to prioritize uh mm. food sex social validation uh information power so there are certain triggers this this is doesn't really change everything that we are drawn towards is uh, some version of these things and so i i i've re- i've realized that the reason that society has evolved the way it did is so that it can hijack these existing systems uh, and make sure that people are doing things mm. so when you say that char log kuch kahenge correct uh, that is a very powerful motivator right social feedback is a powerful mm. motivator and so imagine if your entire family had a ritual mm. where they would file taxes on one day and every family member who doesn't file taxes is subject to scorn and ridicule <laughs> you you could bet that you will file your taxes <laughs> but since we are not wired to uh, you know prioritize it by ourselves uh, it just slips under the radar you know you bring up an interesting point um, i was reading about why rituals were created and rituals became a thing across family across society so that people stuck to following certain ways of functioning so that they wouldn't kind of drift away like prehistoric man would 
you know just be a, drif- be a drifter and at some point you had to bring rituals to say okay no i can't be somewhere else i have to be here to do this lo kya karenge and all that and that kind of comes into it so do you feel that oh, do we find ourselves and and that brings me to today's world then where on one end we've had these rituals over time which was a social construct to control how we as human beings function then we found the internet we said you can do all those things but you can easily kind of slip away plug in and do whatever you want chaos has arrived um how have our minds dealt with that do you think our mind someone like one second what's going on um, has that has that been a rattling force for our brains or am i overthinking this one No I think you're bang on point and in fact uh, as a society I think we have underthought this. Mm-hmm. Uh I I truly believe that we are very much in a transition phase where our uh, society has evolved to a stage of overabundance and uh, our brains are still living in a time of scarcity. And because genetics and evolution takes time we still haven't reset our parameters. We are still very much in that whole Uh, let's gather what we can let's hold what we can mm. let's uh, you know that's what leads to clutter everywhere there is clutter because we don't we don't really know how to let go of things maybe in the next 50 100 1000 years human beings will figure out that hey we don't need so much mm. uh, and when i say figure out i mean figure out at a at a limbic level or a emotional or a genetic level yeah. we are definitely not there yet So there's basically a conflict between our <laughs> primal brain and our uh, evolved brain. <laughs> you brought up a great point, um, which is the primal brain and the evolved brain. What's our primal brain? What is our evolved brain? I'm actually going to ask you a lot of like um, neuroscience for dummies questions today as well, because I feel um, oftentimes we all consume stuff that's super evolved. Um, I mean, we all watch Andrew Huberman way too much for our own good. and when he goes deep into that stuff uh, you feel like you come out with a degree in neuroscience but you haven't you don't know the basics so um i'd love for you to explain um how these two parts of our brain uh, work uh, and also work with each other sure yeah i mean calling it two parts is actually an oversimplification in itself um it's kind of like a step by step evolution so if you think of it like a building hmm. uh, you have to start off at the foundation the basement for first floor second floor hmm. so imagine if we are we have reached the 34th floor for hmm. example yeah um to the 34th floor evolved after the 33rd floor hmm. at every floor uh, evolution has taught us another important lesson uh, some pa- behavior patterns that are important for survival uh, so the first 10 floors took many 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 years to evolve hmm. uh the last the last few floors have evolved a little bit quicker uh, so the prefrontal cortex uh, and the neocortex has evolved a little quicker than what the limbic system has evolved and that evolved quicker than what the spinal cord has evolved over uh, so the earlier the evolution the more en- ingrained the behavior patterns hmm. so uh, according to seniority whatever 10th floor says the 34th hmm. floor has to do because the 10th floor guy would be like Boss, I have been in this society way longer than you have. I am the secretary and the chairman. Uh, you have to listen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> so you have to listen to me. Uh, so the primitive brain and the evolved brain is a arbitrary distinction. We say that okay, everything below the fifteenth floor is primitive, and everything after. Hmm. But it's not exactly like that because sixteenth and seventeenth will still listen to the primitive brain a lot more than the thirtieth floor. and so the job of translating what the 10th floor is saying mm. uh, falls on the 14th 15th 16th floor if that makes sense it has an and also from a functionality standpoint where does base human instinct kick in often times right um at at i think at points of of crisis when something's really off that's when we really go back to base instinct like you are going to like fight or flight mode when you are in danger or freeze hopefully not but i'm a freezer most times i will freeze um yeah, fight definitely not so either flight or freeze is my two base instincts uh, whenever any danger kind of comes um yeah apart from those what else does the the 
chairman of the society tell the upper tenants ki you know these are things you have to do uh, this is where i take over and i'm not letting you guys have that late night party mm. it also tells the uh, the newer tenants what to look for and what to get in what to what to pay attention to so uh, suppose if the uh, the the eyes can actually see a uh, hundred things mm. all the images that the eyes will see first goes to the limbic system okay the limbic system will quickly approve okay this is important this is not important and so what your prefrontal cortex or what your evolved brain is actually seeing is only things that have been approved by the limbic system it's like sensor board so the limbic system has to decide yeah absolutely it's like a sensor board you think you're seeing everything but you're not So there was this line that uh, I had come across in a textbook uh, or in some in some book on vision neurobiology of vision mm. that says uh, do you tell your eyes where to look mm. or do your eyes tell you what to think oh, wow that is so interesting because it's true hmm i think we tell our eyes what yeah, so i think the first you. option is what i would pick the more i think about it i'd pick the first one i feel the yeah. the brain tri- uh, directs traffic way too much in terms of uh, what we focus on what we do and this is where i, I want to kind of move towards motivation right um i'm super intrigued to see what motivates people um a because you're surrounded by so much motivational content all over the place um <laughs> um i am as guilty as most people of sharing a lot of that but i feel at some level what motivates us to do what we do um to want to do the hustle to do the grind to do to have goals to move towards it if you want to mo- if you are at a point where you don't have motivation a lot and i think most people do suffer from that many ways you want to find that motivation which is why it is such a need for people to consume motivational content um how do, how does the how do you innately make your brain find almost that track of motivation um in terms of just how it functions uh, this is the billion dollar question yeah of course every every single person in the world would uh, want to know this and uh, this is this is a question for instagram reels is how i call it <laughs> <laughs> yes change my life in 30 seconds yes. who wouldn't want that exactly that so what is very interesting is that uh, that in itself so shows such a laziness on the part of the viewer right yeah. that i want you to improve my whole life but i can only give you 60 seconds exactly to- yeah <laughs> or i'm going to watch dance videos <laughs> <laughs> yeah or move on to videos is going pointing in different directions and moving from that but no it's, it, yeah because it, If you think what we we're all trying to find motivation trying to be productive um, or rather understand productivity like i have my own issues with yeah. over productiveness or rather propagating too much productivity in that sense i hope you enjoyed this part of my chat with siddharth there's a bunch of other stuff coming up on this episode but if you want to listen to the full audio episode head straight to the link in the show notes to catch it on your favorite audio platform but don't forget to hit subscribe and smash that bell icon because part 2 is coming up very soon <laughs>